Okay, welcome everyone to the Passion Reflexes team call tonight. We are so grateful that you guys are here. Mm -hmm. Every single one of you that are on here, you are rock stars. You're making this a priority in your evening. We know that everyone has really busy schedules and we're just so, so thankful that you made this um, your priority tonight. Our guest speaker I'm so excited about is Amber Ike and she is a recent Emerald Ambassador and she is just an absolute um just gem of a friend and the kindest sweetest person and has an amazing gift at leadership and so she's going to pour some of her leadership wisdom into our team and help us grow <laughs> thank so you I'm gonna thank you yeah. um like she said i'm amber ike and she asked if i would just speak on some leadership tips and so um, I'm just going to share what's on my heart with you guys tonight. Um, so I'm going to be reading from some of my notes to try to stay on target. But I'm going to start off with one of my favorite leadership quotes, and it's by John Quincy Adams. And he said, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, then you are a leader. And I just love that quote um, because we are in the business of growing ourselves and growing others. Um, that's one of my favorite things with this Plexus business is just being able to grow as a person and encouraging others on our team to grow as people um, also. So in, to encourage people to dream bigger than ever before, that is huge, you guys. Um, I get so excited about people dreaming bigger with Plexus um, and to inspire our teams to step into their strengths and reach their full potential. But in order to inspire and influence others, we need to know ourselves. It's hard to inspire other people if we don't know who we are ourselves, right? Um, we have to be comfortable in our own leadership skin, if you will, and operate in our own strengths. Focus on being your best you and people will naturally be comfortable being themselves and operating in their own strengths. So in this industry, some of you guys may have noticed this already. It's so easy to look around and compare yourselves to other people, right? Has anyone else fallen into that comparison trap where you're like, oh, well, she's so good at that and he's so good at that. Um, why, why aren't I good at that? Um, I definitely have been there, done that, got the t-shirt, you know definitely compared myself to other people. Um, so it's so easy to fall into that and just focus on what we're not good at while we're focusing on what other people are good at. But the problem is when we compare ourselves to others, we lose our joy, we lose our strength, we lose our focus, and ultimately, you know, it hurts our confidence. So when we look to others for admiration and ideas, that's one thing. You know, if you if you admire another leader, um, that's amazing. You know, it's great to do that. But if you're looking at them and trying to measure up to them and realizing that you're not, you know, good at the same things, that's never going to be good for you as a leader. Um, so when we hyper focus on other strengths and not our own, we decrease our positive influence in others, thus hindering our leadership. So to be a good leader, here's the things that I think are really important to focus on to begin with. First and foremost, keep your eyes on your own lane. You know, we are all on our own personal plexus journey. Um, you can be there to encourage your friends on their journey. You can be there and watch their journeys unfold before your eyes. But understand that you are on your very own unique journey. And that's okay. You know, we all are going to get to diamond ultimately. Um, it's just a matter of staying true to your own journey and just staying the course, you know, focusing on your final destination. Um, and I will say, you know, some of you probably don't know my story. I signed up um, December 31st of 2013 and I flew to senior Ruby. You guys, I went senior Ruby the, um, May of 2014. So it took me five months to go senior Ruby, um, which was really fast. But I sat at senior Ruby from May of 2014 until just last month. So almost a good two years at senior Ruby. Um, meanwhile, I had so many friends that had promoted to Emerald, Sapphire, Diamond. Um, and it could have been really easy for me to wallow in that and to be like, oh my gosh, 
you know, I'm not going as fast as them. But instead, I had to make the decision, no, I'm going to celebrate with them. I'm going to be excited for them. But I know ultimately, I'm going to reach that destination also. I just have to keep my focus on where I'm going, right? Um, so to be a good leader, you have to focus on your own journey. Don't get distracted and don't start comparing to other people's journeys. And it's so easy in Plexus to do that. So I just really want to encourage you guys not to fall into that trap like I used to. Secondly, you need to understand your own strengths, okay? All of us are created differently. Um, so what I'm good at, that might be a weakness for somebody else. And what you're great at, what you're a rock star at, might not be my cup of tea, okay? And that's okay. We're all created differently for a reason. Um, but when we determine what our top strengths are and when we operate in those, we become even more influential, influential and inspiring to those around us. Um, you know, if we're trying to just fix our weaknesses all the time, all the time, all the time, that's not maximizing our strengths. You know, we're not operating in our full potential. Um, so how do we determine our strengths as a leader? One of my favorite leadership books, and for those of you who are in the Hawaii Hustlers group that Rachel um, is leading with us, um, I have mentioned this book before, but Strength-Based Leadership by Tom Rath. This is an amazing, amazing, amazing book, and this really was a game changer for my business. Um, I actually read it with um, some of my runners, some of my top leaders. And this was a game changer for our, all of our businesses. Um, it really helped us focus on the top five strengths that all of us have. And it gave us room to operate in those areas and to realize the things I'm not good at, somebody else on our team is great at, you know? So why would I focus my time and energy on those weaknesses when, you know, one of my runners is great at it and can do that well? Um, so the cool thing about this book is at the end of it, there's an online assessment and you take about 30 minutes and you go in and you answer the questions. And then at the end of it, um, it, it gives you your top five strengths and it really shows you where to focus your energy and your time as a leader. So I really recommend that book if you haven't read it yet. So, um, so that was a game changer for my business as well as several of my leaders. So the next thing you want to do to be an effective leader, um, so once you've determined to stay in your own lane, focus on your own journey, then you've figured out what your strengths are and how to operate in those strengths on a regular basis. Next, you want to determine other people's strengths on your team. Okay, it's not enough just to know your own strengths as a leader. You need to know what your people's strengths are. Okay, question, um, strengths-based leadership by Tom Rath, and that's the title of the book. Um, so you're gonna focus on your people's strengths and not only determine what their strengths are, but you as a leader need to give them opportunities to utilize their strengths, okay? If you are, you know, for me, for a long time, I, I felt like I was kind of doing a lot of the things that our team needed, you know? Um, and I put this huge burden on myself, like, well, I have to run the online events and I have to do this and I have to do that. Um, but some of those things I didn't enjoy, you know, but there were people on our team that could do those things and do those things well, and they enjoyed doing them. So I had to learn that as a leader, it's not my job to do everything. It's my job to give people opportunities to do those things. Um, and that was a hard shift for me, and I don't think I've actually, like, perfected it yet, but um, it's something I'm working on as a leader. So when you're focusing on other people's strengths and you're giving them opportunities to utilize them, that is going to mean so much to your team members. Um, I'm not a person that likes to delegate because I know people have busy schedules and they have stuff going on and I don't want to burden their plate. But I have noticed when I ask people to do things that I know that they'd be great at, instead of them seeing it as a burden, they see it as a privilege and they're excited to do it because they enjoy doing those things and it's something they're good at, okay? So um, when you give them an opportunity to use their strengths, people rise to the occasion. Um, they want to be a part of the bigger team picture. Um, 
And that shows them that they have the ability to contribute to the greater whole of your team. Um, and this simple shift is just a simple shift where you decide you're going to let people come alongside you and run with you. Um, that is going to create a team culture that values each person for what they're able to bring to the table. It's no longer the Amber show. You know, this isn't team Amber. This is, you know, team journey toward diamond. That's my team's name. You know, it's no longer Rachel's team. It's, you know, team power. What are you guys called? Power of Plexus. Um, that is your team. Okay. Yes. So it's like a whole team effort now. Um, and it's really exciting because when people are bringing their own strengths, great things like huge magical things start happening because you have so much more power when you're utilizing everyone's strengths than when you're just focused on you know a couple people's strengths here and there um so it's really exciting because it shifts the entire team culture um and it, it creates a tribe full of respect and teamwork and if you have a team that's full of respect and full of teamwork um the sky is the limit you guys the sky is the limit with this. So, um, and when you have a culture that allows people to be themselves and utilize their own strengths, great things will happen. So as leaders, we don't have to be great at everything. I think that's a mistake that we think, you know, in order to be an effective leader, you have to be amazing at everything. And that is not the case. You have to know you're on your own journey. You have to know what your strengths are. And you have to figure out the strengths of those around you and help give them opportunities to operate in them. And that's really what I think effective leadership is. It's not being the best at everything. It's not, you know, having the right answers all the time. Um, it's really creating a culture of people that can work together um, and use their strengths for the greater whole. So, um, we will operate in our own strengths and you can link arms with others on your team that are wanting to do that because ultimately we're all going to reach that same destination of diamond. So that's what I got. Rachel, did you want to open it for questions or anything? Yeah, totally. Let me, um, amazing. Huh? Seriously. <laughs> so amazing what I'll probably do because it can get a little long with the questions I'm probably going to stop the recording okay. um but open it up to the floor which I think will be really fun so thank you for that Amber we're so grateful for you I took notes I'm like yes <laughs> <laughs> okay so I'm going to stop the recording